about Prahlad Maharaj meeting a saintly person who behaves like a python. So when I was planning this class, I was thinking about the first time I came to India in 2009. And I went to my husband's village for the first time. And you know everything's very exciting when you come to India for the first time. And I wanted to see what an Indian market looked like. So my father-in-law said it was OK for me to go. But he said, bring an umbrella. And I said, uh, there's no clouds in the sky. It's completely blue. It's hot like anything. Why would I bring an umbrella? He said, no, bring an umbrella. It's going to rain. Bring an umbrella. I thought, I have no idea what he's talking about. Why would I need an umbrella? And 30 minutes later, it rained. You know, I, I said, OK, I'll take the umbrella. And it rained, even though there wasn't a cloud in the sky. So I thought it was interesting how, how perception works. Because even with my limited knowledge of how weather is, right, I perceived a cloudless day. But with someone who has knowledge, right, who has proper understanding, knew that it would rain. So you know how there's this old saying, I have no idea who said it, but it's an, it's an old saying. I tried to look it up, couldn't find the person. But there's a saying, don't judge a book by its cover. It's an old saying. Most of us know this saying. So in the same way, just because a person may have erratic behavior, right, even though it's a cloudless day, right, it, it still will rain. Even if a person has erratic behavior, it doesn't make them a crazy person. You know, it may. Uh, because underlying those qualities can underlie a spiritual personality, right? They may have spiritual qualities. So today I just wanted to explore a little bit about what an avaduta is and understand the qualifications of a saintly devotee. And finally, I wanted to talk about how there are no personal obstacles in our ability to become a saintly person. So first we'll talk about, we'll just a little bit talk about um, what an avaduta is. In Nectar of Devotion, chapter 35, Srila Prabhupada defines an avaduta. He says, an avaduta means a highly elevated mystic who does not care for any social, religious, or Vedic conventions. In fact, here, and then, you know, there's a little bit here in text 10, where he says, a saintly person may not expose himself to the vision of human society. You know, his behavior, his, by his behavior, his purpose is disclosed. He presents himself like a restless child. Even though he may be a great orator, he may be a very great speaker, he'll present himself like a dumb man. So there's, uh, so they kind of uh, um, have a little bit erratic behavior. Okay? Just to give some qualities. An example of this, for example, is uh, Lord Rishabdev. Lord Rishabdev, of course, is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And after enthroning his son, Bharat, he had 100 sons, and the eldest one was Bharat. So after enthroning Bharat Maharaj to the throne, he became like a madman. He decided to renounce. He became like a madman. He was naked. He had disheveled hair. And then he, he, was he acted like he was blind, like he was deaf, like he was dumb. It says that he did not care for social conventions. And it says that he appeared like a dull stone like a ghost or like a madman. That's how he was, Supreme Personality of Godhead. And even though he was, they said he was so beautiful, beautiful limbs, beautiful lips, beautiful, every, he, everything was beautiful about him. But because he was so erratic, he was covered in dust and dirt and, you know, behaving in such a way, he was completely rejected from society. Anyone that saw him, they would spit on him, they would yell at him, they would hurt him. They would do many awful things to him, right? So when you hear that an avaduta behaves in this way, and this is the reaction that they get from society, one would wonder, why become an avaduta at all? And I mean, externally, we can see that maybe it's, it's you know, maybe, maybe it's like the nice avaduta, like Lord Nityananda is the nice avaduta that we know, right? We all love Lord Nityananda. He's known as the avaduta, right? One earring. He preaches to everyone, regardless of, you know, caste, creed, you know, anything at all, Muslim, Hindu. No matter how low you are, he'll preach to you. That's his mercy. Okay? So it could be for preaching, like Lord Nityananda. Um, maybe it's, it's just a personal endeavor, like they don't, want, they don't want people to perceive them as a pure devotee and then give them all this honor 
It could be because of that. Um, Srila Prabhupada, however, says that he also defines avaduta as meaning free life. It means free life. That they don't have to follow social conventions simply because they don't have to follow a social convention. If you think about it that way, like we follow social conventions. We dress a certain way. We act a certain way. We follow certain rules. We go through certain samskaras because we have to follow these social conventions in order to keep our life balanced, in order to keep our lives peaceful, in order to help us focus, really, and help us achieve Krishna consciousness, right? Without the social conventions, without Vedic rituals, without, you know, religious rituals, it's very, very difficult for the common person. But the avaduta is already at a Paramahamsa stage. We said that yesterday. They already reached that Paramahamsa stage. They've already, they've already reached pure love of Godhead. They don't need to follow social customs anymore. So, for example, a crude example I can give, but an example. So, if you notice, when a student in Mayapur, for example, a boy, right? One of the rules for attending Gurukul or the international school is a boy must shave his head. Yes? He must keep his head shaved. Now, the second that they graduate from school, right? They finish their goal. What's the first thing they do? They grow their hair as long as they can, right? And it just, it flows in the wind, you know? <laughs> Isn't it? It's the first thing they do. First thing. Why? Because they're no longer limited by those social conventions of having to keep short hair. So similarly, because an avaduta doesn't need to follow social conventions anymore, they're free to do it. They can open their hair and be as wild as they like. Now we should consider that even though we've, we've heard these, these qualities of an avaduta, Rishabhadev, and Lord Nityananda and, and this, this saintly person that's behaving like a python. Not every crazy, let's, let's, let's be clear that not every crazy person is an avaduta. And sometimes I think it's hard to tell the difference, right? Like I, I remember when I first started reading Chaitanya Charitamrita and it was way too far out for me. When I heard the qualities of Lord Chaitanya and his ecstasy, it was... I, was, I, I said, let me go back to Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> this is too much for me. Right? When we hear those qualities. So how do we know the difference? What's the difference? How do we know that whether they're a madman or a, a true saintly person? So Bhakti Chara Swami Maharaj says in a lecture, he gives a very nice analogy. He said that the sunrise and the sunset look exactly the same. Yes? But they're diametrically opposed, isn't it? One is bringing in light and the other one is taking light away, isn't it? They're diametrically opposed. So the same way, it's the same way with a madman and a saintly person and an avadut. Even though they're diametrically, they may look the same, they may do the same thing, but they're completely on opposites, what their aim is, what their intention is. And I would say that personally, it's very difficult to, to see who is an avadu. I wouldn't like, I, you know, don't offer obeisances to every mad person you see in Mayapur. And I think it would be very difficult for us in Mayapur to, or for us in general, to identify who is an avadut. I mean, Prahlad Maharaj is, is an example because he himself is a pure devotee and can recognize pure devotees. And he's doing his own, I think it's, it's interesting, they use this term here. They said, uh, Prahlad Maharaj once went out touring the universe with some of his confidential associates just to study the nature of saintly persons. So he's just doing like a scientific study on, you know, saintly personalities and he came upon this avaduta. So a personality like that, that knows what are the qualities of a saintly person and can identify a saintly person and is a saintly person, I think we can, can identify who's an avaduta and who's not. But generally, by and large, I think for us, it's very difficult to follow or to find. 
And 